This is going to be more powerful than that. So when it comes down to it, as long as everything is kind of like going according to this plan, this will line up with whatever it says and whatever it reasons and so forth. But if there is a sort of a split, this one's going to win because this one feels deeper. This one is like, oh, this is who I am. This is like my heart and so forth. So you're going to be choosing the causal level. It's the core of the ego. It's the core of defense mechanisms. It's the core of our strategizer. It's where the gremlin likes to live. So today, I'll leave some room for your questions. But today, um, I want to... share a little bit more about how to change perspectives. We've talked a lot about um, <coughs> changing your state, occupying a different state, assuming a feeling of the wish fulfilled and so forth, using imagination, combination of imagination and faith in that new conviction, in the new assumption. I just want to make that a little bit more visual to you guys and uh, direct your attention in a practical way, as much as possible, to where you can start playing with this intuitively, experientially. <laughs> so, These represent the four main levels, at least according to this system. You could add sort of sub-levels of subtlety, but I think this kind of covers most of the ground in terms of the fineness versus grossness of the elements of experience that you'll be dealing with in this life anyway. So this will, this will do, otherwise it gets too complex as well. But, but it is up for interpretation different um, traditions will have different views on it and so forth. These will do. They'll cover most of the elements that you'll have to deal with. You're all familiar with the I am, I hope. It's the fact that you exist. It's the I am with no form. It's the I am unconditioned. It's the I am unfiltered. And this is also called the great causal body because it's kind of like the soil for the seeds to then sprout, to then become trees. That makes sense. Um, so it is God, but obviously God is the soil. It's the great cause for everything. So it's the great causal body. Then more specifically, we have the causal body. Um, and subtle, you know, mind, thoughts, symbols, imagination, and then the physical, the world that you're familiar with. I'll go a little bit deeper into that in a second. Um, I chose to represent it like this kind of, imagining the I am to be the first person view from which you're looking out into the world. So these concentric circles of subtlety, if you will, kind of point to going more within, if you will. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. All right, so we have the physical. Mainly, again, you could add more things, but this will cover most of it. You know, mainly, um, when we're talking about the physical, we're talking about the five external senses and what they perceive. The people, places, things, events, facts, and so forth. And you could say, like, the chemical material, like organs, you know, just the chemical, dense, heavy, constructed nature of it. For the most part, just what you're dealing with, how you'll be experiencing it, what's relevant, you'll be dealing with the body, the world, and relationships to things and people. Then the subtle, you could say, instead of the five external senses, is the astral senses or the inner senses. It's just like when you're dreaming at night, you can hear things, you can see things. If you're imagining something, or if you're kind of like remote viewing, um, you can see things, you can hear things, you can feel things, but they're not using the physical senses. So I just kind of summarized that as the astral senses. 
again, that word is up for interpretation, but you get what I'm saying. So inner senses, you could say too. Thoughts, language, or words, reasoning, symbol interpretation or recognition and projection. And you could say part of this body or this level is also the energy flows, the subtle bodily energy flows. And um, in India, they call it the pranas, different pranas, five main pranas. But it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, those are systems of exploration. Anytime you feel energy moving through, shifting, vibrational, emotional, and so forth, uh, it's largely would belong to the category of the subtle or energy body. Feels like, to sort of summarize it, feels like thoughts, feelings, and imagination. That's going to be what you're mostly dealing with, unless you do a lot of energy, bodily energy work, like Kriya Yoga or Kundalini Yoga or something like that, then or healing, then you'll be dealing also quite a bit with the energy flows directly. But for the most part, for most people, interacting with the subtle body has to do with thoughts, feelings, and imagination. Then we go a little subtler yet, even though it's not called the subtler body, but it is subtler than the subtle body. So this is the causal. Causal already reveals something, which is it's the cause of what you perceive. It's the cause of the visible. It's the cause of these. At this level, we're dealing with intentions. And you could also place intentions in the subtle if you're kind of like formulating an intention. But really, this is going to be more powerful than that. So when it comes down to it, as long as everything is kind of like going according to this plan, this will line up with whatever it says and whatever it reasons and so forth. But if there is a sort of a split, this one's going to win because this one feels deeper. This one is like, oh, this is who I am. This is like my heart and so forth. So you're going to be choosing the causal level is the core of the ego. It's the core of defense mechanisms. It's the core of our strategizer It's where the gremlin likes to live, which is really just, we call it a gremlin kind of like, or we call it the ego or we call it whatever we call it, the imposter, the hijacker to give it a sense of like, it's not you. So you can begin to explore it. However, it's only appears to not be you. And you can watch my video. There's only one you, the end of the ego on YouTube. It only appears to not be you because you're aware of this and this and not of that. Does that make sense? So a lot of this, you seem to not have a whole lot of control over. Seems like you don't have that much free will at these levels, nor at this level, because you're not aware of it. You're not dealing with it subtly yet, directly enough yet. So it's, this produces sort of a thinker on your behalf, a strategizer on your behalf. And what you're going to do, there's nothing else for you to identify with except for that which you experience. You're not going to experience with some earthworm in China because it's not part of your experience. So even though this is no longer, doesn't really appear to have your free will, and these are expressions of a core perspective here, so it's going to be like a gremlin that's living in your body. And often you call it you or you think that it's you, but we call it a gremlin to create that initial space or distance. So you can see, hey, what's going on? This is not really me. These are just thoughts that appear. This is not really me. This is just a, a strategy that comes up, a manipulation. Why am I doing that? And so forth. And through that questioning, first calling it something other than you, like the gremlin, now the question and investigation starts. And you can go to the causal level, begin to investigate what must I believe is true? What is the core perspective that gives rise to this sort of semi under my control little creature that just kind of seems to want what it wants and does what it does and feel what it feels and have the patterns of communication and relationship that it has and so forth. So Neville Goddard, for instance, since we've been kind of dealing with some of his work lately, lately um, he suggests more or less, of course, he hasn't used the system, but more or less, he says free will only exists at, that at this level. There is no real free will at this level. Well, he says, okay, 
at this level. So kind of a crossover here. But at this level, there's no free will. But I would argue that even at this level, you could say from this way of looking at it, there really isn't any free will. Because it's still manifestation of the causal level. So, but Neville says something similar, that the only um, free will that you have is in the ideas that you select, the belief you select. You, you have the freedom to select an idea. But then once that idea is planted, it will begin to be nurtured by the thoughts and the reasoning and the strategies that belong to that. And the energy flows will start to corroborate. So that's kind of like the sprouting phase. But the seed's already planted. So in that way of thinking, even free will doesn't even really exist at this level. It does, but in this way of thinking, it doesn't. <laughs> um, and then naturally, the deeper... Um, what's that word? Compulses? Can you say it that way? No, right? Compels? Compels? Yeah, compels. Well, it's experienced as, <coughs> as a compulsion, but from this level to there, it's compelling, right? This compels that. So yeah, this compels that, that compels that. So these are more or less slaves. Now you can make some adjustments here, but if you're trying to make an adjustment here that's not adjusted here and they're contradictory, you're going to have a lot of trouble, a lot of effort trying to rearrange that pattern simply because this is so much more powerful. Everything going well online? Can you see and hear me? <laughs> Great, okay, cool. Sweet. So intentions, beliefs, assumptions, things you assume right now that you don't know you're assuming. Perspective. You could also say point of view, where you're looking from, where you're coming from. This is, this, these are the first things you're kind of witnessing, your thoughts, your reasonings, and then it will result in this. But what is the point of view that is witnessing these things? Because there's lots of other things in the universe to witness that you're not witnessing. It's because you don't have the point of view to witness it. Because your causal level self has collapsed around a certain theme, an incarnational theme, um, certain lessons you want to learn, certain desires that gave birth to this incarnation. And within this incarnation, furthermore, desires that you develop from there. So this is the planting or selecting phase. You could also say it's the seed, the inception of an idea. Oh yeah, and a state of being or vibration. Like what's your core vibration? You could also get in touch with the causal level like that. What's the core vibration? Not just what are my thoughts vibrating at, but what is the paradigm, the context for it all? So the seed is planted in the soil of the great causal body or God or I am. Unconditioned awareness provides the substance. Now this one feels like, this one is hard to describe. What does it feel like? Like how do you know you're working with the causal level? And one way I described it was the empty nebula of psychic atomic energy, which sounds a little bit less relatable than thoughts, feelings, <laughs> imagination. Oh, it's the empty nebula of psychic atomic energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go really deep you've heard me i'm not going to go too deeply into this aspect of the four bodies if you're interested i explain more about that in the global enlightenment course on youtube it's like eight videos full-size videos online global, global what online global, online global enlightenment retreat on youtube so check it out if you want more background on the bodies but specifically here i want to give you the tools to kind of work with the causal body when it comes to rearranging who you are, choosing a new state, occupying a new state, healing old vibrations, sh basically, basically shifting who you are and what you will be creating in these levels of your life, which I didn't go into in that retreat. But what I did share in that retreat is that the causal body, at least initially, is kind of experienced like a blank or like a space or like a nothing. 
if you imagine kind of stopping the mind, but not being like fully bright, awake, enlightened, but just like you just stop thinking for a moment, you kind of drop into sort of a calm, peaceful, dark room almost, or dark space. Does that make sense? So then that's you kind of retreating your consciousness to the causal level. Now, if you kind of stay there and you imagine or understand that at that level, in that nothingness, in that sort of dark space or dark room, which is similar almost to sort of a state of deep sleep, if you picture that, that's kind of the soil in which the seeds are planted. So there's energy there. It's just not visible in the way that you are used to things being visible. So it's going to feel different than what you're used to. You're going to perceive it in a different way. And one way to describe it is empty nebula of psychic atomic energy. So if you, if you imagine, I'll refine this. This is the first, first draft. <laughs> um, but imagine total blankness, like no activity of active thought. There's no active words. There's no language. There's no symbol interpretation. There's no relationship. It's just like a dark blank, like a vast dark blank, a deep, peaceful, almost like sleep-like dark blank. Now within this space, if you will, If you start feeling into the core or root of a belief, a perspective, something that you've learned when you were younger, for instance, like I'm not good enough, or I'm not whole, or I'm unworthy, or you also have positive belief systems, don't get me wrong, but, um, but they typically work for you. So if you go to a belief system, it could also be that, like maybe let's say you're a really arrogant bastard, or like maybe you're like a Donald Trump type of figure. Um, then maybe you'll find a different kind of belief there. Like, no, I'm the greatest or whatever it is. But typically those kinds of arrogances are based on some kind of a lack belief at this level. So usually as humans, we come back to like, no, my belief system is not that great. <laughs> um, I got some work to do there. So if you tune into that background feeling, like, what is that belief? What does a belief look like? How can I perceive a belief? It's not going to show up as a thought or as a word, not in a typical sense. It's not going to show up as a sentence. Now, if I deduce a sentence, for instance, oh, I think it's, I am unworthy. You know, when you have a healing session, someone asks you, probably someone in this community, you know, what must you believe is true in order to feel this way? And, <laughs> and you go sit with it and you kind of don't want to because uh, it's not the funnest thing. You just want to, you, you can't wait to go out there and prove this wrong, right? Because, so it's kind of boring to have to go there when there's so much here that you could do to prove your worth. So it's like, yeah, I'd rather not look at not being worthy. I'm kind of eager and antsy and look, there's people around. Why would I do this now? That's not going to help me, you know, be great. It's not going to help me be worthy. You're going to think I'm a loser even more. Why would I go spend time here and like, uh, like a fucking loser? So <laughs> I'd rather go out and show my worth and prove my worth and, and demonstrate my worth and extract it from the world. Or I might change some thoughts or words. So maybe I discover, okay, I think my belief is I'm unworthy. So I'm going to you know, stand in a mirror. I'm going to say, I am worthy. I am worthy. <laughs> I am thin. I am fit. I'm beautiful. And it will, it will be able to leak through. But what you often notice is that there's a contradictory energy present when you do that. When you start confirming something that you don't really believe using the subtle body, it can have an effect. It does open a gateway. It does make a connection. It does begin to plant new seeds, but it's a bit of a slow process. And typically there is some resistance to what you're saying. Let's say you're obese and you look in the mirror and you say, I'm thin. I'm thin. I'm thin. You know, you need a lot of imagination power <laughs> to kind of override what you're seeing here, the harvest or the end result, right? So because of that, you believe, because you have to believe that maybe you're unworthy or that maybe you're obese or whatever it is, or you're not well or whatever negative belief you have. But let's use the example of, 
uh, being overweight and looking in the mirror and saying, I'm thin, I'm thin, I'm thin, or I'm, I'm slender or whatever, then you're going to probably feel, or you could say, okay, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved. But if you have a belief here that is I'm not loved, then you're going to feel that resistance when you try affirmations or when you try to imagine your ideal reality. You're going to find some resistance. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So that's because this one is deeper than that. So you can change that and have a positive effect to some degree. But the real magic happens at the causal level. You're familiar with what reasoning looks like. You're familiar with what energy feels like. You're familiar with language, with words. You're familiar with imagining the astral senses and being some other place. And, but what most people are not very familiar with is the causal level of their own consciousness or mind. Often we call this the unconscious in a modern psychology. It's the seed level. So this is typically where the I'm unworthy or I'm unloved has its seed, has its root. Now, how are you going to then know that you're working at that level? There's sort of a threshold here. And you could say that threshold exists, similar threshold exists between all the levels, but it's a threshold where you take your attention from outward looking to inward looking to kind of behind you looking. And for most people, especially you guys, these two will be experienced as being in front of you, right? Oh, I see my thoughts. I see my emotions. I see my feelings. I see my physical body. I see my world. But I don't think that for most of you guys, the causal body is in front of you. It's not even always in front of me because I'm interacting quite a bit with this, with the world and the senses and all that stuff. So I, I have to switch that too if I'm doing intentional work at this level. Um, not always, but for the most part. So the causal body can be experienced as being behind your thoughts and feelings and energy sensations and imagination. So, but that's kind of where perception as you know it ends. There's no light, there's no shape, there's no form, there's no symbol, there's no words. So how are you going to recognize that? It's initially going to feel just like an empty black blank, like a sleep state. Peaceful, quite peaceful if you're just using it as a meditative state and you're not doing any specific work. But now we're trying to do specific work at that level. So then what are you looking for in that space? And by the way, the power by which you know any of these levels is awareness. It's just become identified with these levels. So it's kind of like that's where you feel like you are. But you're always here. And you're always, everything is enabled by this. So even the causal body can be perceived because the great causal body, the light of awareness, enables perception and understanding of the causal level, even though it doesn't have words and thoughts and symbols and visuals. So then that's why this is so different here. You know, if world, body, relationship, thoughts, feelings, imagination, you're familiar with that, but then feels like empty nebula of psychic atomic energy is a little different. But one way, it's just one way of describing it. But let's say that I go to the causal level and I try to feel into something that I haven't seen yet. Like what am I not seeing about what I am assuming right now? Sometimes maybe something here happens that seems challenging or weird or like po not negative, not positive initially. I can give it a positive interpretation, but it seems maybe negative or there is a negative interpretation. Then I would... Try to trace that back to, okay, what must I believe about myself for this to be reflected in that way or for me to interpret it in that way? Because oftentimes what we think is a negative event is actually just part of the bridge of incidents that gets us to what we've been requesting all this time. If I've been requesting a better job, my boss might fire me. If I then go judge that negatively, I'm missing the fact that actually it's on its way to a better job better life. Everything I've been asking for is coming my way. But at the first sign of distress or like lack, we start judging it from a lack place. And then we kind of stop the sprouting process. We stop nurturing the sprouting of that new intention. 
So oftentimes, well, I would say always, everything that happens is a reflection. But when you're working with this consciously, you're setting new intentions, then everything that happens in your life should be seen as part of the bridge of incidents that gets you to where you want to go. Doesn't mean that some of these don't reflect a personality trait or a conviction that is worth looking at. In fact, they do. But it's all a reflection of this. So then if I were to go look for that, okay, what must I believe about myself? What am I assuming? Where am I coming from unconsciously that is producing this? If I allow my, my consciousness to go to that level, kind of sort of exit the thinking mind, the symbols, and just stay quietly attuned to my desire to find, to sense what I believe, then one of the ways that it typically occurs to me is kind of like an invisible, empty, almost like subatomic or molecular sort of cloud structure. It doesn't look that way. It doesn't really have a visual, but it kind of feels like a nebula, like a mist, like a, um, a structure made out of emptiness, existing in emptiness, like empty vibration inside of space. Kind of feels like that, like an empty nebula of psychic atomic energy. That's kind of what it feels like. <laughs> so that's what you're working with. And it doesn't have the typical symbols. Now you might get symbols and thoughts doing this work or memories, but that's the subtle body reacting or maybe helping you a little bit, give you more clarity on where to look for the root, how to tune into that core frequency. If this is the song, then this is the vibration of the radio station. Now, if you were to just tune into the vibration of your favorite radio station, you wouldn't perceive music. You need speakers for that, it's just a subtle body. You wouldn't perceive the music, but you could perceive the waves that produce this music. So they kind of indicate each other, but the causal level, you just don't typically have the senses for that. So it requires some concentration, some subtle work. But if you can lock onto the core frequency of an assumption of you, where the I am became I am this, or where the I am became I am unlovable, or where the I am became I'm an asshole, or where the I am became I'm unlucky, or where the I am became I'm lucky, could be positive again. Then you can sense into this invisible empty cloud of atomic psychic energy in the back of that vastness, through which the light of God shines, gets rerouted, refracted, distorted, and then produces emotions in your state of being and in your thoughts because it's out of alignment with the pure undiluted light of God that shines through. But when the light of God with the I am hits the causal body, it has to go through your filters in order to produce an experience that you could say belongs to your individuation of the creator. So now your thoughts are misaligned. They're not centered anymore. They are produced over here. And then they further produce a life that is either slightly or severely out of alignment with the pure undiluted understanding of God. And you're going to feel that, especially when you get to the extreme end, you're going to feel that as an extreme longing or seeking for either liberation or even death or resolution or whatever it is. So that's seeking, but the seeking is present here too. So in that way, the emotion, when you have emotions, you're basically out of alignment, sorry to say. But the better they feel, the closer you are in alignment to God. This is his alignment, bliss, love, love. It's God's energy. You feel whole, you feel complete, you feel free, you feel powerful, you feel naturally abundant, you feel connected to everything. You don't feel limited and small. But the more that you believe, okay, I'm a person, I'm a body, I'm small, whoop, you're going to feel the light of God in its distorted version over here. Inherently, it's not going to feel good. It's going to want to go back, snap back in alignment to the truth. So when you have an emotion, especially negative emotion, it means you're having a perspective that is out of alignment with your true being's perspective on whatever topic you're thinking about, whether it's your house or your lawn or your body 
for your relationships and so forth. So I encourage you guys to try with your healing work or when you're shifting, wanting to occupy a different state, state of being, state of core vibration, see if you can begin to work at that level directly. And it's kind of like, yeah, well, it's like this. <laughs> um, but it's kind of like instinctively at this level, moving out of a certain assumption, out of a certain state of being, and just kind of vibrating intuitively at the level of intention to a new state of frequency that will come with a different assumption of who you are. Now you have a new point of view, which means you'll have a completely different fractal portion experience of the one infinite creator with the one infinite with its infinite expressions and experiences. There's a reason you're experiencing exactly what you're experiencing right now is because it all falls within the core vibration of your current point of view. You cannot perceive what you're not the vibration of. That's why fighting against this or even against this is quite fruitless. If you don't change it at this level. That's why hypothetically you could not do much at all. Although whatever perspective you have here will compel you to act in some ways, there's no way around it. But hypothetically, you could pause the subtle and physical activities and you could change the world by changing this. If you change your point of view significantly enough, you'll literally be in a different frequency and we call that parallel reality shifting or jumping. So then when you open your eyes again, after like years and years, of, <laughs> just kidding. After some time of total rearrangement of this, if it is truly different, if you truly believe all the way through differently, then when you open your mind and your physical eyes again, you will see a different world because you have a different point of view, which gives you access to a different slice of infinite possibilities. But if you don't change this and you try so hard to fight this and that, it's an endless battle that just further confirms, typically further gives proof to your thoughts and emotions and how you feel about yourself. Now, when you are sort of working with the causal body, you will begin to notice one way to do the healing is to allow the great causal body or the pure awareness to just shine its loving blazing light onto the empty nebula of psychic atomic energy that you've just kind of honed in on intuitively like oh i kind of feel it it's sort of a weird construct a belief system that doesn't have any visible form yet but i can feel it i intuitively see it and then you let the light of love light awareness from even beyond that the one who's aware of it from beyond you allow god's light to kind of hmm, dissolve it absorb it and then from there if you want you can plant a new seed make a new selection just select, oh, who do I want to be for the next phase of my life? That, that feels right. That feels good. And you can compare that kind of to your blueprint, your intention for this lifetime. And so forth. You're calling, if you will. No, the great causal body. It's the I am without form or the unconditioned consciousness. Consciousness without a condition, without an assumption. Just pure awareness of being itself. Or you could say God, awareness, love, light. Feels like being, awareness, bliss, love, light, wholeness, oneness, and so forth. 